Hello, I'm Laura Furiosi, divorced mother of three, and I'm here with my mother, Lynette Galvin, with 35 years' experience in family law. You're listening to the Divorce Course Podcast. Through our candid discussions, we hope to help you through your divorce or de facto separation. We will be answering the most commonly asked questions and covering the stages and steps that you will face on your way to freedom. Have you looked at the numbers and realized that there may be the chance that you can't keep your house? This episode is for you. We are talking about eight out-of-the-box ideas on how you might still be able to keep the house. And mum has seen this happen with many clients Mm. and other ways to work around it. So we are going to be going through those options for you today if you are interested in wanting to keep the family home after separation. Hi, mum. Hello, Laura. Hello, everyone. I remembered to say hello to you today. (laughs) (laughs) So, Mum, we did a an episode recently, and I'll put it in the show notes. Called, Mm -hmm. I really, really, really want to keep the house. Yes. And in that, we kind of talked about, you know, some of the reasons why you probably can't, and and explored that. But I thought this time we might just do eight out of the box ideas because you've said there are ways. There are often ways, not always. Yes, but you might. And they might, might be able to. things that people might not have considered yep. because most people think the only way they can keep the house is by having enough money to buy yes. out their ex yes. in a property Straight settlement. away, yeah. So, well, let's talk about these eight. Let's get right into right it. Right into them. Okay. All right. Number one, and I think this is an interesting one, it's a delay agreement. So can yeah. you explain what a delay agreement is? Okay. So I what, what I meant with that is, it's not that you delay reaching an agreement, mm-hmm. but you you reach your agreement and you talk about what you're going to do with the house in the future. So you might be able to negotiate with your ex and say, look, how about we, we put in our orders that I will refinance the house and buy your share out in two years' time, five years' time, whatever. And in the meantime, I have sole occupancy of the house and you can – then you can settle all of your property at the same time mm-hmm. with this plan. A plan can be in an order. Right. Okay, so you don't have to wait until you can afford it before you can have property settlement. A plan can be in the order. So you're saying, like, so someone's sitting on the couch right now, mm. they've looked at their bank accounts, they've looked at everything, they've looked at their percentages and they're like, I can't I can't buy my ex out of this house. But what you're saying is maybe they can in a, in five years. Yes. If, if you think in your heart, if you could just get another couple of years, solid saving, or you've got a promotion coming up or mm. something like that, that you can buy the house, mm-hmm. you can probably start to negotiate with the other side. They've got to be prepared to wait for their money, yes. I guess. But, yeah. but I'm seeing it more and more. And if, how is there any risks to doing that? Yeah. Well, the risk is, I think, is if the house goes up in value mm. and then you've got to borrow more to mm. get, buy their share out. What if um, what if you get to the five years and you can't? Do you just Well you have to have an or else on okay. there and the or else will be the sale. When you say on there, you mean like on, in consent in your, order? In your consent orders, yeah. Okay. In your agreement, in right. your consent orders that you would sell it. And and you'd have all the process of how you would do that selling. Right. So yeah. it's just written out exactly yes. what you would do in five years. And or then in two if years, I can't yep. buy it, then um, Within this is 30 what we days from this date, we will get a valuation and then we will list it for sale mm-hmm. and then we will divide the proceeds this way. And you're saying people are doing that? People do that, yeah. People okay. do that. Do manipulative controlling people do that? Uh, sometimes they do. You know why? Because they like to have To control. have control over whoever it is. And often the, the people who've been married to a manipulative and controlling person hate being stuck there. Yes. Yes. And sometimes too, they can't afford it. Right. Ultimately, and it might be like I'm not saying it's always too good to fight for this mm. for the house. Sometimes you might as well bite the bullet, yeah, and, and move we, we and talk buy about, a unit. Yeah, we, we talk about that in our yeah. Where I really, really am going to keep the yeah. house. So just if you are listening to this, please go listen to that one That's as well. Right. It's got options, but this is the out of box idea. Out of the box. All right. Ideas. Now there was another idea yeah. that's a little similar similar yeah and that's for the, the kids yeah yeah so can you tell us what that i that what that is in yeah. so order? generally if the if if a party can afford it if the other person can afford to wait and they are reasonably amicable, kind and amicable nice they might say how about you stay in the house we don't want to upset the children we'll 
let stay there until such and such finishes high school or until the youngest turns 18 and you might be able to get an agreement like that. And then they sell And that. then you either sell the house or buy the house out. By then it's not going to impact on the kids as much. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Oh, I do see it sometimes and it's lovely. Yeah. It is lovely. Yeah. Because, you know, if if there's enough money otherwise than the house, well, then the both parties have enough to be living on. They get their yeah. property settlement of the other stuff yeah. and then they just wait on the house. But again, that has to be in an order mm. or in a, a an agreement. If you don't put it in an order or an agreement, then if you're de facto and the two years passes and you haven't done anything, uh-huh. then you might find yourself in the civil courts if you can't agree to sell properly yes. um, between yourselves. And, so you've got to be careful. got to be careful with not, your timelines. So it can't be a verbal agreement. You can't go, okay, you can stay there till the kids grow mm, up mm. and then and then sell it because maybe they'll get a boyfriend or a girlfriend and they're like, well, no, you're allowed to stay there but you can't have a partner. Uh-huh, and then with yes, all that, and then, that, and then you go, no, I'm going to have a partner. And then they go, well, then you know what? You can't have the house. Yeah, you're out. Yeah. So you need that written agreement. Absolutely. And also, too, um, if your house is held by both of you, there's two ways of holding, owning a house. One is joint tenants and one is tenants in common. Mm-hmm. And with tenants in common, that's the way business partners buy property. Huh. So that it goes, your share goes according to your will if anything happens to you. Right. But joint tenants is how couples buy property by and large. Yes. And that means that upon one of the couple breathing their last breath, dying, the other person instantly owns the entire property themselves. Hmm. And you might not want that to happen. So do you have to if you've had else? yes, you'll have to do something about separating the tenancy because you might not want that to happen. Or you might still be that amicable. You think, well if I die he can have it because yeah. he'll probably look after the okay, kids. Well, that's but good that hardly ever happens. Of. Yeah, be very aware of that. Go and get your legal so advice you must in your go state. See yeah. A lawyer to do those yes. kind of things. They're tricky but And the same with is... the delayed agreement. Like you don't want to say, well, let's not go to lawyers. I just agree you can stay in it. Yeah. That's a bad Bad you, idea. No, you, that's You've got right. to get it, it written is. down. See, a lawyer's main job in these things is to ask, "What if? What yeah. if? What if? What if it doesn't sell? What if she dies? What yeah. if uh, the house goes up in value? What if it drops in value? Mm. You know, all of those things. What if it sells for less than the mortgage? What if it burns down? Yes. What if? Uh, what if she's living in the house and she can take some money out of the mortgage without you knowing mm. and make it worth less and less? So there's a whole lot of of drama. Drama. Okay. Yeah. So you've got to be very careful and get a lawyer. Right. Yep. Okay. Well, there's two options anyway. They're, yep. they're out of the box. They're a little hairy. So yeah. definitely don't do this on your no. own or make sure you get it written by a lawyer yes. if you're going to negotiate that. The next one, mum, is this mm-hmm. one's a little bit of a no brainer is like the family member. So can you explain that? Yep. So sometimes in my career, I've seen people who may have no chance of getting a mortgage because their income's not enough or they don't have much of a deposit or whatever. And in those cases, you might find a family member like your mum or something. Don't ask me. Oh, it's about to say, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Mum, I want to buy another no. house, please. No? Okay. All right. But, but you know, I've seen that happen where another fa- family member comes in, they go on the deed, they go on the mortgage with you, and then in due course, when you can, you buy them out. So, so, the, so your ex... Can't say no, your mum can't buy it? No, they can't. So you can have in a court order or a consent yep. order that, that it's bought between by, Yes, between that them. gets transferred to you and a friend or, okay. you know, or to you and your nominee, whoever. Okay. Um, as long as it makes a fair deal for both parties, mm-hmm, like the, mm-hmm. then the person who who isn't getting the house has no cause to complain. It's so nothing to do with them. So they can't just say, no, I don't want to sell it to you. Mm. I want to sell it because I don't want you to have it. Yeah, I don't want you to live in it. I want it sold. Yes. Well, the court generally says no. If one per- person can afford to retain yep. an asset, then they will because the court has an obligation to to uh, preserve the assets of a marriage. Okay. And so selling a house, as we all know, incurs uh, costs mm-hmm. of sale, mm-hmm. um, real estate agent fees and so forth, and that reduces the overall amount of money to be divided between the parties. So if you can afford the house particularly if you're already in it, yep. then the court will let you have it. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. Mm. All right. Uh, for those who don't have cashed up family members, mm. you can also, this one is an out-of-box idea, it's delaying the property settlement altogether. Is yes. it like dragging your feet kind of situation? Kind of it is, yes. Okay, so this is what potentially 
other people are doing as well. I've seen it done. So, yeah, I've but, seen it done. I've seen it where a person, and, you know, sometimes my clients, they, they're in the house. They do ultimately want to buy it. They can't afford to buy it just now, mm -hmm. but they might be able to in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And the other side's not putting any pressure on them. Mm -hmm. So I say don't stick your head yeah. into that noose. Just get your ducks in a row, save up your money, mm -hmm. um, and then ho hopefully by the time the other person is pushing for property settlement, you'll be able to buy the house. It is a couple bit of risky, though. <laughs> yes. It is a bit risky. What if your it? house goes up in value? Yes. Or, uh, or up in smoke? Um, well, what if you're trying to get your ducks in a row and then they go, I want property settlement now? Yes. So you can't you rely on it. You really. can't rely on it. What you do is just as quickly as you Hope can. For the best. So you just get slightly better position all the time and mm -hmm. hopefully um, it will be you'll be improved enough to be able to sort of have a more realistic opportunity of keeping your house. Now, we did an episode called Delay Tactics in yes. Divorce and, and there are a lot of naughty reasons why people yeah. keep delaying so that mm. they can hide money and all that sort or of stuff. Or that you get through your, remember, you've got your time limits. Yes. And sometimes they'll stall and negotiate, so hoping that the, the person forgets they've got a time limit and then mm. they go, ha ha, you've missed the time limit, mm. you know, 12 months after divorce, two years after a separate, uh, de, de, facto. de facto, and they go, yeah, you can't have it now. Uh, you should have made an application to the court. Mm. You haven't, so now it sits like it is. So just yes. keep an eye on your deadlines, guys. So don't don't rely on that delay idea mm. as a, a good idea, but keep an eye on it if but other people are doing take it. Take advantage. Yeah, but also, yeah, that's true. But also if the other person's not in much of a hurry mm. and you might like have kids that you, you're trying to get through year 12 or whatever, yeah. um, then just use that time to quickly regroup and sell everything you've got that you don't yeah. need. Like, yeah. So, yeah. Get, just get, try get down the bare raise bones. Raise that money up as much yeah. as you can to be able to buy it. Mm. Okay. Um, another one is called uh, getting the value redone. Yeah. So how does that help you well, out of the box buy that? Sometimes um, values drop and okay. sometimes the valuation that, has you've all been working off is getting a bit old. In the negotiations. Yeah, in the negotiation. So if you're pretty confident it's dropped, I wouldn't do it if the if you think it's gone up That's because true. you don't want to pay more. That's but true. if you're pretty confident it's dropped, consider that maybe getting a, a reappraisal of the value because it might have dropped a, a couple of hundred well, sometimes thousand. Sometimes it goes up and down like a yo yo. And yeah. then sometimes yeah, the property market does have the bottom yeah. fall out of it. And you can get pre approvals in banks these days. Mm -hmm. That's another thing with the house is, and this is a very tricky thing to try, but if you're in an amicable separation, you might be able to do this or avoid it. And that is that you you work out from the bank exactly what the maximum you can borrow is. And then you, you reveal that to the other side and say that, look, I can pay out the mortgage and I can give you this much but no more, but I can give you the rest of it by installments over the next two years, if you like, or mm -hmm. You know, I'm expecting a bonus in December. I'll give you that then. So you can just, you know, just think, think different way. I, I think of it as being Irish. My Irish side comes out <laughs> <laughs> and think of an interesting way. They do things like with a unique twist sometimes. So I guess it's important again to note, though, that all of these out of the box ideas definitely. Mm. You don't want to just rely on them. You want to no. see a lawyer, see if you can do that because, mm. you know, again, it is risky because values go up and down. That's right. And your ability to borrow go up and down. You might get sick and you might not be able to ultimately yeah. borrow. And the court has, an, has apart from its legislated uh, role in preserving the assets, that is um, so that not wasting agents' fees on selling something that one of the parties could probably buy. Mm. They also have an obligation under Section 81 to finalise the financial relationship between you both. So Great. if there is going to be any delay or, or anything like that, then the court wants that to be as clear as if it were just a business dealing with a clear ending to it. Okay. And that probably brings us on nicely to the next one. Well, I was going to go to superannuation. Oh, wait. Yes. Okay. Well, so it doesn't. Super. <laughs> so super mum. Super mum. How do we use super to get out, buy the RX out of the house? Okay. Well, sometimes pink, I think people, they focus on the house mm -hmm. and don't realise that's not all of the assets. It's it's the house, sure. Sometimes it's the car. You might have some cash or shares or something. But super is usually the other big asset, superannuation. Mm. And people, I think, fall into three 
three schools of thought about superannuation. One is... Oh, hang on, this is a divorce cost personality, superannuation personality type. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's a, sub, yeah. a subtype. A subtype. Okay, so okay. one is... So which one are you, if you're listening? Try and think which one are yes, you. Yes, with try and think, yes, with your super. So are you a person... Who, if you're separated or about to be and you need to get everything finalised and sorted but you don't know what to do next or you're looking for a way to do your own divorce and settlement without spending thousands of dollars on lawyers then you already know what you need to do and that is to sign up and become a member of the DIY Divorce Blueprint. Empower, educate and equip yourself with the legal know-how and the tools you need to get divorced or de facto separated and finally set. Work through this course at your own pace without feeling confused, lost, scared or overwhelmed of all the family law legal jargon and processes. Let us walk with you through this journey and show you a better way. Are you a person who takes a lot of comfort from having your super and you know you you feel good and safe knowing that that in 20 years or so you're going to have that money to live on or are you a sort of person or is your ex a sort of person who thinks that that's such a long time away and I wish I could get my hands on my super now Mm. and do stuff with it now what a waste yeah and then there's the other people who like Oh, I've got super. I forgot I had super. So so there's those sorts of people, okay? I thought you were going to say the types are, oh, I promise I won't touch their super. Oh, no, that's... I I promise I won't touch their super because it's theirs and they worked for it and I'll feel bad. And they made me promise not to touch their super as I walked out the door. Yes. Yeah, no. Okay, all right. (laughs) So So, so then, so, okay, so people forget that superannuation is one of the big assets. Yes, yeah. So then how can you use super as an asset to buy a house? Okay, so I try to find out how my client thinks about super and how their ex thinks about super. And if super is everything Mm -hmm. to them, to the other side, uh, then you can give them your super. You can do super splits. And that means less money you've got to pay them to buy out the house. So when you say super splits, it means, so say, for example, someone's got $100,000 in super. And say I've got 50. So they can, you can cut your super in half. I can give and you, give you fifty. Uh, yeah, you could give me fifty, or I can give you my fifty. Okay, um, well, nearly all of fifty, I think, and that would give you one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of super. Of super, but you can't and touch I, it. No, you still can't touch it's it. It's just sitting there yeah. up in its little. Cloud. But if you're in your sixties and you're doing this division, yeah, um, then it's it's almost as good as money. Yeah, because yeah. you can get it. So, uh, but don't expect if you take your your other partner's super over that you can access it. You can't. Yes. You you're stuck with the same rules. So you've yeah. got to consider when you're doing the percentage split, mm. how much of the percentage is money I can touch, mm. and, and super because super you can't touch. Yeah. So when it comes to saying, okay, well, if I get the house, you can have all the super. Yep. Will they let that happen? Some people do. So the court is allowed to do that. Mm-hmm. The court's allowed to do it. So. So you usually have two sorts of fights. It's one is, I don't want super, I want cash, don't give me any more super. And then the other fight is, um, don't touch my super. Right. So that that is, um, you either want to hang on to it yeah. or it's yeah. it's pointless to you depending on the personality of the person. Okay. But a lot of people forget that you can trade it off. And so say you've got a house worth $300,000, mortgage of $200,000. You would have to borrow 200000 to get your ex off the mortgage mm-hmm. and presumably give them another fifty if you were going 50-50 in yeah. the house. Yeah. So then you'd have to borrow $250,000 on a $300,000 house. Mm. If, however, you've got some superannuation sitting over here, you might be able to trade some super over and reduce the amount that you have and to pay them. Trade. You're giving it to Give your it ex. To, yeah. But to your ex, yeah, okay. with the super split. Okay, so that is a an out-of-the-box mm. idea on yep. how to keep the house. Okay. Yep. The other one that we wanted to talk about was exploring your budget. I mean, it's a basic one. Yeah, it but, is. But, Mum, you're saying sometimes people don't look at how they could cut expenses and sometimes they don't look at child support, what what potential yes. m- money that's going to be bringing yeah. into. If you say, like you do get people say, oh, I'm not going to go in for child support or I'm not going to go through the child support agency. Well, you know, it's your children who might suffer. So find out exactly what you're entitled to there Mm. uh, with that. Then look at your car 
Have you got a debt on the car? Do you have to have that car? Can you get a cheaper car? So there are a lot of people, the house is the the main goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen my clients bless them, sell sewing machines and everything. If it makes a difference, getting a little kitty up so they can afford to get the house. Yes. Um, And giving the ex every pretty well everything else well that was the last one give everything but the house but the house everything but the house yeah Yeah. i mean but i worry about people sometimes with that if you've given all your super away then you need to to be able to get more super for when you retire yeah and because otherwise you can't eat house you can't eat house well and and i've always thought because i remember it happening to me uh, you get the house and then the washing machine breaks down Mm. and and you're in desperate straits yes or so you, you know, you've got to really ask yourself, is it worth what I'm doing to keep the house? So I think it's a really good idea. I think you made me do this, Mum, yes. for my car Display when homes. I was a kid. Mm. No, no. When I was a kid, you said to me, actually, no, it wasn't. It was that book you got me about money. Oh, I got you a what Noel Whitaker. Noel, Noel Whitaker book. book. And it said, if you're going to go get a car, sit down and write out not just how much the car costs, but how much it is for your driver's license, how much it is to pay for Red Joe, how much a week you'd be paying in petrol mm. and how much you'd have to pay for repairs and then add it up and see if you can afford it. And I think it's the same for a house. Sit yeah. down and write how much is it to keep the maintenance up, to pay These the electricity. Insurance. Yep insurance and all of that. There's a lot mm. to think about. So if you are going to give everything up but the house, make sure that you can still pay for yes. all the to live, other things. live with some sort of dignity. Yeah. And remember, there's a tiny house movement has a fair bit of mm-hmm. attraction and mm-hmm. minimalism is a lovely thing. I mean, you know, everything in your house is secondhand now. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever you don't keep, you can get, you can replace it secondhand if you like. I think it's an emotional wrench for yes. people selling the house. And I remember yeah. Professor Professor Parkinson said once, everybody knows that the marriage isn't isn't over until the house gets sold. Right. And I think that's part of why the tie is there. Mm. Um, but I think some people say, oh, I don't want to sell the house because I don't want to uproot the children. Mm. And I, I think we've said this perhaps in the, I really, really mm. want to keep the house, but maybe consider as well, maybe a fresh start is a good idea. Yeah, kids don't mind. The, the, yeah. the reminder of dad used to be here or mum used to be mm. here it can be hard. It can feel weird. So, yeah. yeah. So I guess you've got to consider all of those options. Like a little summer palace, have yeah. a little little yeah. rest. And like my client maybe who ended up keeping the little white rental with the with the gingham curtains because she found it mm. soothing to live there and it was her yeah. own taste. Yeah. Yeah. So I think even though we've got these eight out of the box ideas, mm. you know, you can still the normal way, Mum. That's not out of the box. What do most people normally do? Most to, people to do. buy their ex out of the one house? or the other of the persons people is going to buy the house. They go to their bank. They work out what the mortgage is. In my example before, it would be okay. I've got to pay out this two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and that gets my ex's name off the mortgage, mm-hmm. and the house gets transferred to me. But oh wait, my ex will need some money out of the what they call the equity, the difference between the debt and the value of the house. Mm-hmm. And so that's where I was suggesting in my example we give them another 50000 So then you've got to borrow 250000 and you do that, you set that up with your bank, and then it's just like any other conveyancing. Uh, you actually are buying his half right. out. Okay. Yeah, and it, you and end up with a fresh mortgage. The beauty of having consent orders to do that or no a court order duty. is you don't have to pay the stamp yeah. duty, which can be ridiculously expensive for yes, houses, isn't yes. it? Yes, Section 90 of the Family Law Act saves you from that. You can also do this in an agreement, a financial agreement, mm. but not just something you sort of write up. It's got to really have a financial agreement has to be done properly with lawyers and certificates, and it's not a cheap document. Sounds really, really stressful. Mm-hmm. But, but, you but know, at least, you know, so let's quickly just go through them again. So you can have a delay agreement, you know, you could say wait two to five years and mm-hmm. then I'll pay you or up. more. You can have a, an agreement where you wait till your children are of age that they leave. You can have a family member help you out to pay for it. But, you know, family and money is, is a little tricky. So be careful. Yeah. You know, you could drag your heels a little bit in the divorce or not start anything if they're not starting anything yes. until you've got enough I'm money. I'm comfortable with that, yeah. Get the value redone if you've been fighting this for ages and mm. the property may have dropped, but be careful that it might rise. Enough, yes. Explore your budget. Have a look at maybe what child support you're entitled to. Maybe you can rent out a room. I've had people do that. Huh? Rent out rooms. Uh, renting just out to part get of it. Through. Yep. 
Oh, we, yeah. we should have put that we in. We should That's have put nine. that in. We just did put that in. <laughs> Eight, <laughs> and <then> seven A. <laughs> <laughs> consider uh, superannuation if you don't really want it, if you think you're going to be all right, mm. but get some financial advice about that because you don't want to be floundering when you're old and no. regretting that because your house property could go down in price by the you know or yes. up but and then the other one is just give them everything but the house but again like we said be careful because you can't eat the house unless yeah. it's a gingerbread one yeah. and you don't want to be stuck not being able to pay the bills and the problem with keeping the house and then finding out you have to sell it anyway mm. is that if you've if you've made it if you've bought the house off your ex transferred it to your sole name and then find you've got to sell it you're the only, you're the person who's going to be paying all by yourself yeah the agent's fees mm, and everything that's true it's all going to diminish it whereas if you if you think you might have to sell the house um, do some hard thinking and work out whether it's more likely than not that the house is going to be sold. You're better off to sell it as part of the orders because then the sale proceeds are applied first off to the costs of sale mm-hmm. and and that means you're only paying half of you're it. You're sharing the fees yeah, yeah, instead that's of right. going, whoopsie, I actually can't afford this mm. now. I have to do this all on my own. Yeah. Mum, I think we maybe could have added another one. <laughs> We could have um, made it around 10. No, but the, I, I mean, and it, it does annoy me on TikTok. We see these mm. comments a lot and I just kind of blur them out now. I don't even pay attention to what these people write. But there's a lot of nasty, angry people when we talk about child support where they yes. say, why don't they just get another job? So, I mean, there is the potential to increase your income. Yeah. You could get a, a side hustle. You've got a side hustle. We've all got you, side you hustles. You could yeah. you could go and get new qualifications. Didn't you say you were just talking to a lady who's learning to be yes. something like uh, uh, getting qualified? Yes, yeah, she is, and and uh, yeah, she's got a plan. Yep. And in the future, she's going to have a really high income. Yeah. So I mean, so you could go. Just I think it's the really world's hard. Royster. And I did I did say this to Mum uh, when I when I was stuck in the negotiations. I don't know why, but I felt like everything would be frozen forever and there'd be no potential moving forward for anything. And it is what it was. And the money that I got was all the money I would get. That you were ever going to get. Yeah. And, you know, because I've got a lot of illnesses, chronic illnesses mm. with endo and, and things that, I, you know, I can't. I can't be a teacher anymore. Mm. I can't stand up all day and work that way. But so I thought whatever I get is whatever I get. Mm. And I think a lot of people sometimes may think that, but you don't know what your future holds. Yeah. Go and explore maybe. Go to a um a what a, a job tertiary a careers expo. Day. A careers um, yeah, day. Yeah, a job expo. University yep. open day. Um, and see, maybe, maybe you could have a side hustle. You could be surprised. Yeah. 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 So I know that's very patronising for anyone to say to anybody, and I totally Look, um, don't mean to patronise, but no. it is an out-of-the-box idea that you could consider doing when the kids are older. Yeah, we're just, I, I guess it, we're not trying to be patronising, but no. I think it was important, um, and I didn't know you were feeling that way, I but did. I think that um, if I'd known that, I would have been able to say to you, whether you'd believe me or not, mm. but there is a future for you. This won't last forever. Yes. You're coming through the other side and mm. then you have this bright, shiny future that's all yours to choose. To do. And I know, you know, particularly anybody who's in their 40s, 50s, yeah. 60s, they think, it's well, hard. my entire life has been ruined because what well, what am I going to do now? You know, you're thinking, I'm never going to find love. I'm not going to, you know, but you do really just have a new chapter. It's just a new chapter. Once you get through this yucky bit, there is a new chapter for you. You've just got to turn the page and rule a line Mm. under this one. And once you rule that line, that's when you can clearly see a new future. But until you rule the line, until you get the settlement, Mm. it is very hard to see a new future. So keep that in mind that this isn't the be all and end all forever. You do have a new future. You have no idea what's going to happen to you in the future. You might become a pop star. Yeah. <laughs> you might be some reality TV yeah. star. You might or, start a podcast. Yes. And, <laughs> you and never know. You know, you it's it is a bit like having a, a, a new teenage years where the you can choose. I'd say to people, I often say to people, what did you used to love when you were mm. a kid? What did you think you would do? Yeah, you know. And, and, and some people are living that. yourself. You yes. know, exploring yourself and going, oh, 
I used to really enjoy going for walks and I don't do that anymore. Maybe I should go do that. Yeah. And and the potential of new love, you think there is no way in hell yeah. <laughs> I'm ever going to do that again. Yeah. And yet, you, you I'm know. finished with men. I'm finished <laughs> you with women. You never know. Yeah. You might run into some guy at the, where did you meet Brian? I mean, ran into him at, at a um, shop. <laughs> at a shop. And you stood there for ages talking to him. And I was so bored. And now you've been happily married with him for so many years. I can't even count. So, you know, that was a chance meeting. I bet you didn't think that you were going to meet someone in the in the aisle of the supermarket after mm. your divorce. And no. I, you know, I didn't think I was going to meet my partner after my divorce. But look, yeah. here we are. And, and, and even if you are... Even if you do meet someone lovely, it's going to be nice for you to have your finances sorted. Mm-hmm. This is your chance to to reset yes. yourself. Yeah. yeah. And you don't even know what houses are out there. Oh, go and see some display homes. That's what I always sent my clients to do. Yes. When they like the house became a big thing for mm-hmm. them, I'd say, go and have a look at some little display homes on the weekend. And then next thing you know. They're not even display homes. Just go do some um, inspections of houses that are for sale. Absolutely. And absolutely. just have a look at what now the options with are. Realestate.com or whatever. Yep. You know, it, yep. we can see inside everyone's place. <laughs> <laughs> it is a bit fun. Yeah. But um, I think to everyone that's out there, I know with these eight of out, out of the box ideas, it mm. means just because you can't afford it uh, now doesn't mean you can't afford it later. Yeah. Um, but you need to know the reason that you want the house is not some psychological divorce issue. Yeah. So go and see a psychologist. And don't assume what the kids want mm. because uh, teenage kids. It's not really up home. to them. <laughs> no, that's true. And and to them, really, home's not the most important thing. Yeah. And when we moved house, mummy go, we're moving house. And I go, okay. Like I, I didn't go, oh, no, Yes, <laughs> I love this um, thing here or, no. you know, like I, I, I was always I, excited. I always said to you, I'm getting you new pink curtains. Yeah. And when we moved into our new house, the kids were just really excited. Who was the first person who went to the toilet? Like <laughs> I, I was the first person who went to this toilet in this house. So, you yeah. know, the kids, the kids are running around bags in bedrooms and stuff and and they're all excited i think even if it is a, a drop from a mansion to a an apartment you know mm. i don't think kids see it the same way we do yeah, a lot less cleaning too yeah that's true <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So thank you, Mum, for those out of the box ideas. You're welcome. Again, everyone, this is a legal education only. This is just an out of the box thinking, brainstorming session yep. for you. If you want to still keep the house, always go and get legal advice. Do not make any decision based off this episode because no. it's up to you and your lawyer or someone who knows your legal situation. Explore your options. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Mum. And thanks no worries, everyone for Laura. listening. We'll see you again later. Okay. <laughs> If you found this podcast helpful, we'd love it if you could rate, review and subscribe. By doing so, you are spreading the word to help someone else just like you. Lynn would like to remind you that this podcast is general advice only and you should always get legal advice in relation to your particular situation. And remember that the Australian laws may have changed since recording.